Okay, so this uh, drawing, this video relates to the right cone and the different types of um, patterns you can take out of it. So I'll draw my basic um, setup here. Uh, it's 125 diameter on the base. Uh, it's 250 high to the apex, apex being the top of the actual uh, cone itself. And I've drawn a, a, a full profile of the cone developed out right at the very top in this portion up here. Then I've done a frustra uh, frustrum of the cone, this line across here, projected across here. Here is the frustrum of the cone in this portion here. And with the angle coming down here at 30 degrees, uh, from the side elevation I've drawn a uh, truncated cone in this portion here. So into the right cone on the next sheet, click on it. Obviously that's a right cone there in the drawing. That's the detail that you're going to have. You need to number your drawing from 0 through to 6 on the bottom. And when I've laid the pattern out, uh, I've stepped off from 0 through to 6 back to 0. And that's the actual profile of the cone. I put the cord length in there at 355.76. I'll show you how to do the calculation on that. Frustrum of the cone. Uh, there's the frustrum. A frustrum of a cone is a uh, cone that's been cut with a flat top. So the side elevation uh, is in the blue portion here and the plan is actually on the bottom there. Uh, looking down on the circle at the top, this portion here is always a complete circle because it's sitting flat across the top. So once I've uh, projected this line across to the outside edge, this portion here, we can swing our arcs. Once again, numbered from 0 to 6, stepping off around the outside, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, back down to 0. That's how we lay out a frustrum of a cone. The next one is the truncated cone. Got a uh, Zintec one here, electro galvanized sheet one here that one of the students have made. So the uh, side elevation is this portion that's just lit up in blue. And the plan view is the piece right on the bottom here. Because it's cut on a 30 degree angle here, when we look down on it, uh, we don't see a true circle. Uh, a true circle would only be if it went horizontally, uh, horizontally across. So we have to develop out that pattern. Over here I've actually developed it out. Uh, and you can see the actual profile of the hole. Uh, it's clearly not a circle, simply because it's uh, it's been elongated one way. So that's what it looks like down on the bottom when we look vertically down on it. Uh, and then we lay it out, and that's the profile that we got when we when we project it um, perpendicular to the actual uh, the cut line itself. So in that actual projection, I've done three three different joint lines. Uh, this, this this portion here, this, this pattern on this side here, actually has the joint line on the shorter spot, on the line 0. So when it's laid out, it goes from 0 up to 6 and back down to 0. So the, shortest line, uh, the joint line is on the two shortest lines on the ends there. Uh, this, this development on this side here, this one around this portion, actually has the joint line on the number 6 line. So it starts from 6, goes back down to 0, and then back up to 6. And that's the profile you get on the end of it, which is completely the opposite of that one, as you can see. And then this one up the top here, I've actually put the joint line on the, on the very side. So the numbers for it, it starts on line number 3. So 3 down to 0, back up to 6, and back down to 3. So just the different um, shapes. You could actually put the joint line any, on any point. Excuse me, it doesn't really matter which one you do it on. Um, I've simply tried to show you the three different methods for uh, that I would use. In fact, invariably, I always try and put the joint line on the actual, uh, on the side. I, I very rarely put it on the throat or the heel, but people can do what they want. I'm not here to tell people what's right and what's wrong, so uh, just showing you the different options. So back on the front page, I've done the calculations for it. I decided I would work it out with a cord length. Uh, a cord length is a straight line length that goes across a circle. 
So in here it says uh, the large radius for the development uh, layout is the hypotenuse length on a right uh, angle triangle. So uh, if we took this line here, these lines, we've got a right angle triangle here that has a radius of 62.5 millimetres and a vertical height of 250. So using Pythagoras' theorem, the large radius for a layout development is C equals the square root of a squared plus b squared. So uh, I've done that calculation, therefore c equals the square root of 250 squared plus 62 and a half uh, millimeters squared. And we get a radius, the large radius, uh, of 257.69 millimeters. Uh, that's actually the same as that length from the apex down to the very base there. Uh, have I got that on the drawing? Probably haven't. Let's put that on. So there's the radius there. I'll just leave it like that. Um, if you draw it out manually, some of you will need to draw it out manually. You won't uh, necessarily want to do it mathematically, and that's fine. Um, that swinging your, your compass from the apex to that point actually gives you the radius anyway. Uh, I've simply tried to work it out or have worked it out so that you can do a calculation with um, a chord length. So determine the portion of the de development, uh, click into that, determine the portion of the development layout that the cone pattern development will take up. We divide the diameter of the base by the layout uh, development radius. Uh, we then multiply it by 360 degrees to, to determine a arc angle. So that means that we divide the radius, which is 62.5 millimetres, by the uh, the radius, of, sorry, that's the radius of the plan by the um, development radius. You can see I've just clicked the line off there, but we'll leave it alone. So it's 62.5 millimetres divided by 257.69 millimetres times 360 degrees, because the full circle is 360, means that the arc angle is 87. Uh, 0.3142 degrees. I'm going to I'm going to round that to 87.31 degrees. And uh, to, the diameter of the layout development is two times the radius, which was 257.69, which gives us a diameter of 515.39 millimeters. So the diameter of the large circle is 515.39 millimeters from one side right to the very other side. Uh, so given that information, we can start to use the formula for a chord length. Chord length equals the diameter here uh, times sine A over 2. What we have to do is we have to divide the 87.31 degrees by 2. Uh, do that first. So when we change our formula, therefore the uh, chord length equals the diameter in this case 515.38 times sine 87.31 divided by 2, we end up with 515.39 times sine 43.657 and that gives us a chord length of 355.79 millimetres. So there's the chord length uh, run across there. I'm just going to put that line in, it's frustrating me. Put that back in there, leave that alone. Uh, so the chord length is the 355.78, and once I've, I've done that on all of these um, circles that I've drawn here, and there's my actual uh, arc angle there of 87.31, which is what I said we were going to use uh, in this point of the actual equation. So if we jump to the last sheet, I've started to draw, I've drawn the basics for a a right cone development. Um, as you can see, I'm going to pull that down a wee bit, sorry. Uh, as you can see, I've got my basic profile here. Uh, I've got this, I've got a cylinder that is um, 80 millimeters radius, so that's 160 diameter. And I just put a dim linear length in, it's actually sitting beside it. Uh, it's 380 millimeters high. So I can start to develop my pattern. If I'm going to do it graphically, well, you can already start to lay your um, cone in. You're going to set your compass into the apex. 
and bring it down to the six point here. I'm going to do that again. Sorry, I pushed the wrong button. Into here, down to the six, and there's my circle that I'm going to start to lay my uh, pattern into. Now I can check that. So what I said before uh, to determine the large radius, we use Pythagoras' theorem up here on the left, which is c squared equals a squared plus b squared. When we transpose that, we end up with c equals a squared plus b squared. So let's get the calculator up on the screen. So the large radius, uh, sorry, the radius is 80 millimeters and the height is 380. So it's going to be 380 squared plus 80 squared equals, and we want to take the square root of that, and that gives us 388, I'm just going to write this down, 388.33, we're going to say in terms of millimeters, so I'm going to put that into here, get out of that, into here, so 380, uh, sorry, 388.33 millimeters, um, from there, the diameter of the circle was twice that, so calculate it back on the screen. If we times that by 2, we end up with 776.65 millimeters, so 776.66 millimeters. So we'll put that in there, 776.66 millimeters. Calculator again. Now we'll clear that. Uh, to work out the arc angle, it's the radius, 80 millimeters, divided by the hot, uh, hypotenuse length, which is what we worked out. It's that length uh, there, that's that length. And we calculated it at 388.33 millimeters. If I do a dimension on it, you'll actually see that that's what it comes out at. There it is. And we'll just do a dim uh, diameter on the one from the cone. And that's telling us it's at 776.66 millimeters, which is what I worked out in the equation over there. 776.66, uh, <coughs> excuse me. So I'm going to get rid of that. And I will get rid of that. And we'll do the arc angle calculation calculator, so we've got, uh, what do I say, radius divided by the hypotenuse and times it by 360 degrees. So radius, 80 millimeters, divided by uh, 388.33 equals, and it's a portion of a circle, so we're going to times it by 360 degrees, and that tells me that the uh, actual cone is going to take up 74.1637 will go to. You don't need to go up, go to that degree of accuracy. You can go to 74 degrees. So I'm just going to put that into the equation here. So 74.1637. And if I type in 176... There's, oh, that's not what I wanted to do. I'm going to go back one, go back space, yep. So we've got that. Uh, now to work out our chord length, uh, here's our calculation. So chord length is uh, diameter times sine A uh, divided by 2. So if you go back to that first one, I said that I divided the arc angle by uh, 2 before I put it into the equation. So how is that going to look on the calculator? So now I've got to get the sequence right for the calculator. So it's 74.1637 divided by 2 equals, and that is a sine uh, number, and then we're going to times that by the diameter, times 776.66 millimetres, gives us a chord length there of 468.29. Just going to write that uh, into the equation. So into there, get out of that. So what do I say? 
0.9 millimeters. So in preparation for doing this video, I, I worked out a couple of things um, previous. So I'm just going to do a couple of things here. I want a start point uh, on the screen coming from the apex at the top. I'm just going to pick a start point. I'm going to lay my three patterns evenly into this cone. So I know that my first circle needs to be 190. Uh, I'm not putting this on the screen for you because I was just working this out uh, before. So we'll say 190.736. This is just to speed the drawing up. Same on the other side. So these are going to be my start lines. One to there and one out to the other side. So I'll put those in as projection lines. From there, my cord length is 468 millimeters. So I'm going to draw a cone, a start point from those, sorry, a length from those of 468.29 millimeters. Same on the other side. And that goes to that point, and that goes to that point. I can get rid of those two big circles. You wouldn't need to draw them that large with a compass. I'll put those on projection lines. So in actual fact, this portion here is already the layout for a standard right cone uh, on both sides. I'm just going to do another circle. On this here, 190.736, and then lay off my last one, and here at 468.29. Take lines from where those circles are, from that one, back to there. Get rid of that, and get rid of that. So I've set it up like I had on the front page. Three different types of cones. A frustrum of a cone here, a completed solid cone at the top, and a truncated cone here. So that's what we've got at this point here. Uh, we could hatch this first one. Uh, what are we going to say? We're going to say it's solid, and what colour we're going to use? We'll just say it's red. Going to pick a point and enter and say OK. So that's the layout for an actual right cone like that, uh, that we've just done. Uh, for the truncated, uh, sorry, the frustrum of a cone, well, the short radius actually goes from the apex down to this point on the side here. So I'm going to trim that out. It's going between uh, I'll stick that line on there, we'll get rid of that. So where the, where the top of the cone projects across the outside, that's where you're actually swinging your radius from with your compass. And I've got it between those two lines there. So we'll do a hatch again. Uh, we'll say that the colour this time is going to be yellow. Pick a point, that's it in there and push enter. So there's the frustrum of my cone. Pretty straightforward how to do a frustrum. Quite quick. You'll have different dimensions if you want to do them that way. And to get our truncated cone, well every line, these points that, sorry, just go back up the screen a wee bit and we'll zoom out. So on the base here, when I've done my plan view, I've broken it into six equal points from 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, 4 to 5, 5 to 6. They project vertically up to the baseline, and then those lines, uh, where these lines come up, they project on the angle all the way up to the apex. Where they come up and they go through this line here that's at 45 degrees, uh, our swing points actually have to be projected where these lines are, they have to be projected to the very outside edge. 
uh, found a couple of videos online that other people are doing uh, for people to learn from and they're actually just taking the apex line to this point and swinging it but it's not a true length it must go to the very outside edges before you can swing it so I'll just project all these across what are we up to 20 minutes so once I've projected those across I'm going to turn all those into projection lines again uh, just do a different color this time Use the magenta ones, and I'm going to swing those arcs, so these circles for all of these. Here's my first one. Pick up these points properly. There's my second, third. Just keep laying them in. One to go. I'm just going to put uh, let that go. I'm going to put those on uh, magenta as well, projection lines, and I'm going to trim them off uh, between that point and that point there because we don't need them around here. Now this distance, so I said that. Uh, Sorry, I've come back in here. Our cord length was 468 uh, millimeters. So let's just check that that is correct. So dim linear uh, from that point there to that point there. What did I say? 468.29. There it is. And our arc angle had to be 74.16 degrees. So let's just check that as well. Dim arc between those two points there. Sorry, sorry, dim angular, dim angle between there and there. Uh, so it's saying 74. And if we turn the precision on to four decimal places, uh, so it's at 74.1637. It's come out at uh, 35, probably round it up over this side, can't remember what I did. So uh, you can see that uh, the cord length is the flat length across the circle. If I want to um, lay that pattern in, I'm going to uh, do this a bit quicker. I'm going to take these lines here out. And I need to break it into 12 equal divisions. So I'm going to pick that line and break it into 12 equal divisions and run my lines back to the apex just take a moment to do these why didn't I pick that one up there we go back to the apex again back to there Last one. So I'll just get rid of this and get rid of this. So I've got my 12 points. Uh, I haven't numbered them. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say my joint line is on the shortest point here, uh, down the throat from this magenta line to the very base. Uh, this, this distance between that point there. And the red dot there is actually the joint line. So I know that right on the end, this line here is 0. This is 1. Uh, this is 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And back down to 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and 0. So if we're starting on the shortest line, I'm going to put a spline line in. I'm going to spell it correctly down on the bottom left-hand corner. So if this is the shortest one, we're going to the next one. No, we're not. We just made a hash of that. Do it again. To there. To there. I'm missing a line. Why am I missing a line? Ha ha. I've got to cut one of my lines off. So I'm just going to extend that. Into there. And 
there it goes there, Mark. Think about what you're doing. So from the shortest one, that's six, back down to five, four, three, get onto the screen a bit, two, one, and lock that off, pick that point again, and there's our joint line. Sorry, our, our, our layout uh, line on the top, so I'm just going to trim this out a wee bit. Uh, hmm, that's interesting. I'll lay these in as projection lines so it's a bit easier to see. Projection lines, that actual bottom line. What will I do there? I'll trim that one out, will I? Yeah, I'll trim these out. And that bottom line there needs to be I'll trim those out as well. So there's our pattern. From the standard uh, elevation here on the side, I've gone and drawn a, a full rollout length, which looks like this portion here. Uh, the next one I've done is a truncated cone on the side here. Sorry, a frustrum of a cone. Got a flat top on it. Last one up the top, using the joint line, the short line there. Uh, this is zero, one back to zero around here uh, is for a truncated cone. So those are the different ways of laying out the different types of patterns out of a right cone, uh, frustrum cone, right cone, and back to the very beginning. That's the layout methods for all uh, three different types of patterns that you can get out of it, uh, with the truncated one having different joint lines at different points on it. So I've done that reasonably quickly. Uh, there'll be um, some homework required around those, and I'll probably put up another video laying out the pattern on the end here and slowing it down a wee bit. It's a quick overview. Uh, which you need sort of if you're a bit stuck to see where all the lines go actually on the sheets. So I'll leave it there. Thank you.